Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how to solve systems of equations, in particular systems of linear equations. Uh, so if you're, if you're familiar with this topic already, uh, you could click over on, these, uh, on the yellow text over here on the left side of the screen, and that'll take you to that portion of the video. Otherwise, stick around. So, First up, what is, what is a system of equations and what does it mean to solve a system of equations? So, first of all, a system of equations basically is a list of equations. For example, you know, if I write 2x plus 4 is equal to y, and I write y plus 3x is equal to, let's say, 4, these two equations together are called a system. Okay, so a system looks at these two equations as a whole rather than looking at them individually. Okay, and a system can consist of a lot more than two equations. You could have uh, just, you could have an infinite number of equations if you wanted, but as far as algebra class is concerned, you're mostly going to be working with uh, only two equations maybe three in some cases. So this is a system and we want to take a look at what it means to solve this system. So before we take a look at uh, what solving a system means, let's take a look at what solving an individual equation actually means. So the first equation I have written here is 2x plus 4 is equal to y. Okay, that's fine by itself. So solutions to this equation are going to be all of the x, y pairs that make this a true statement. For example, if x were to be 0, then y would have to be 4 for this to be a true statement. Uh, if x were 1, then y would need to be 6 because 2 times 1 plus 4, we get 6. Uh, or let's say if x was negative 1, we would need y to be a positive 2. Okay, so the solutions are going to be all of these coordinates here. Okay, so we have 0, comma 4, we have 1, comma 6, we have negative 1, comma 2. Now it's important to realize here uh, we could continue this list infinitely. There's going to be an infinite number of solutions for this particular equation. You pick an x value, and there's going to be some y value that's going to satisfy that equation. Similarly, uh, for the second equation here, we have y plus 3x is equal to 4. Okay, so if I want some of these solutions, oops, if I want some of the solutions here, you can pick an x value and see what the appropriate y value would need to be. So if x were, uh, let's say 0, 3 times 0 is 0, and we need the left side to be 4, so that means y would need to be 4. If x were 1, then y would be 1, so we get 4 is equal to 4. Uh, or if x were, let's say, 2, this would be 6, and y would need to be negative 2 to make this a true statement. So, the solutions here would be 0, 4, 1, 1, 2, negative 2, and so forth. Again, there's an infinite number of solutions pick an x value, there's going to be some y that could solve it. Okay, so now that's solving equations individually. When we look at this system as a whole, we want to find a particular x-y pair that will satisfy the first equation and simultaneously satisfy the second equation here. Uh, you may have heard systems of equations uh, also called uh, simultaneous equation. So if you're familiar with that uh, jargon, then this is the same thing. Okay, so, and just looking at my list here, I see, well, over here, I have 0, positive 4, and I also have 0, 
positive 4 over here as well. So this solution is shared amongst these two equations, and that's going to make it the solution to the system, 0, 4. So if I plug 0, 4 into here, I obtain a true statement, and if I plug it into the second equation, I obtain another true statement. Okay, now let's take, that's what it means to solve the system, and that's what we're going to be doing with this substitution method and this elimination method. These are algebraic methods that will allow us to find this answer algebraically. Uh, I knew 0, 4 was going to be an answer because I did this ahead of time. Uh, now let's move on. Now what does it mean graphically to solve a system? So we're going to run into three cases. In the first scenario, Okay, let's draw our uh, Cartesian coordinate plane here. Here's our x-axis and here is our y-axis. Now, these uh, systems of linear equations, when I say the term linear equation, that means that uh, we're representing a line algebraically. So, uh, I may have one line right here, and I may have another line right here. Now these two lines, you could see that they cross at a single point right here. Okay, so this point would represent our solution to the system of equations. So this first line is the first equation. This line here would be the second equation. Where they cross represents the solution to the system. So that's the first scenario, and that's the most common scenario most likely. Our second scenario is if we have, uh, let's say, let's take a line here, and we may have another line here. Okay, these two lines here, oops, let me label this really quick. Okay, so these two lines here are parallel lines. Okay, so if this one has a slope of m1 and this one has a slope of m2, when two lines are parallel, that means their slopes are the same. Okay, so, uh, and of course, m represents the uh, slope. So, m1 is equal to m2. They have the same slope. If we run into this situation, for example, if we had the equation y is equal to 3x minus 1, and y is 3x, let's say, plus 2, if we have something like this, the slopes here are both 3. Those are the same. So there would be no solution to this system. These lines will never cross each other. So in this case, we have no solution. Okay. And uh, the third case, the third case would be a bit rare, but let's take a look at it anyway. We have our Cartesian coordinate plane. We have our x axis and our y-axis here. So the third situation would be if we have a line, let's take a line there, and then our second line uh, would be on top of it. So if we have a line on top of each other, then there would be an infinite number of solutions because they are the same line. So, uh, you know, this scenario is not too useful. It may happen, but it'd be a rare case. If you have uh, a system of the same line, you know, you essentially have just a single line. All right. So we're not going to take a look at the third case here. Uh, but uh, be careful of number two. If this ever happens, if you see that uh, you're not obtaining a solution for your system, it may be because you have the same slope, in which case those lines will never cross. So, moving on, let's talk about the first algebraic method here. Okay, the substitution method. All right, it looks like a lot, but once we do a few examples, it's not too difficult. Um, so, we have uh, four steps here, and keep in mind that this is these four steps are not the only way to use the substitution method. Okay, so first. It says we're going to put one of the equations in y equals mx plus b form. 
Okay, if you recall, this is also called slope intercept form because the M represents our slope and the B represents the Y coordinate of the Y intercept. Okay, so we want to have one equation in this form. Now, again, it's, it's not necessary, but if you follow these steps, uh, you will be able to solve the system. Uh, the second step, we substitute the mx plus b for the y value in the second equation. We then obtain a new equation where we only have x values. So the third step is we'll be able to solve for the x value. And then the fourth step is now that you have an x value, we also want a y value that's paired with that x. So we take that x and we plug it back into any of the equations to find y. So let's take a look at our first example here. Oops. Um, okay, so example one. We have, oops. We have y is equal to 5x minus 3. Let's, let's actually leave that up here. Uh, so we have y is equal to 5x minus 3. And we have 2x plus y is equal to 4. Okay, so step one, put one of the equations in y equals mx plus b form. Well, in this particular example, uh, it, that's already done. We have y is equal to 5x minus 3. The 5 is m, and the 3 is the b. So that's fine. Step one is done. It doesn't matter what's going on down here uh, for, as far as these steps are concerned yet. Uh, the second step substitute the expression mx plus b for y in the other equation. Okay, so here is mx plus b. I want to take this and I want to substitute it for y in this equation here. So we're going to have 2x plus, now instead of writing y, I want to go ahead and write my substitution which is 5x minus 3, and this is equal to 4. Okay, so here's my new equation with my substitution, and as you'll notice, now I have a single equation with only a single variable here, so that means I could solve for it. Okay, so uh, step 3 now, solve the new equation for x, uh, so to do this, uh, we might want to combine like terms on the left side here. So 2x and 5x, we get 7x. And then we have a negative 3 equal to positive 4. Then we just add 3 to both sides of the equation. We obtain 7x is equal to 7. And lastly, division by 7 on both sides gets us x is equal to 1. Okay, now that's half of our answer. So uh, the solution to the system, we have our x value of being 1. Now we want the y value. Okay, because remember those solutions came in pairs. There's an x and then there's a y paired with the x. So right now we have half of our answer. We have the x. But once we get the x value, it's a bit easier to find the y. So, uh, step four now, substitute this value of x back into the first equation to find the value of y. So our first equation is y is equal to 5x minus 3. Now we know that x is 1, so we're going to use that information. Okay, now... I'm going to go ahead and put 1 in the place of x here. All right, and then solve for y. 
So y is equal to, and we're just gonna we're just gonna carry out the operations here. Five times one is five minus three. Well, that's just five minus three, which is equal to two. So we know x is one, and we know y is two. So that means our solution is then one comma two. So if if we were to graph this, for instance, we would have the lines crossing at the coordinate one comma two. Now what this means is that we could take one comma two, you know, if x is one here, so five minus three, we get two. If x is one here, we'd have two, and we know y is two, so two plus two is four. This gives us a true statement for both the equations, so it solves both of them simultaneously. So this works out just fine. Now let's take a look at example number two. So example two, we have three x plus y is equal to three, and we have two x minus two y is equal to ten. Okay, so we're going to follow this method again. So put one of the equations in y equals mx plus b form. Now in this case, it's not done for us. So we could either choose the second equation or this first equation here to do that. It looks like it'd be a little bit easier to do step one using this first equation. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 3x plus y is equal to 3. So to solve for y here, we simply need to subtract 3x from both sides. Okay, and again, that's what we're doing when we uh, find y equals mx plus b form. We're really just solving for y, and it will be in this form. So uh, we have, we're going to have y is equal to negative 3x plus 3. Okay, or 3 minus 3x, however you write it, it's perfectly fine. So now this is in y equals mx plus b form, so step 1 is finished. We move on to step 2, substitute the mx plus b here into, we're going to take this and we're going to substitute it into y in the second equation. Okay, so we're going to write the second equation, but instead of writing y, we're writing our substitution. So we're going to have 2x minus 2, now in place of y. It's always helpful to put your substitutions in parentheses. Okay, it will never hurt, but if you don't, it may. So we have negative 3x plus 3 as our substitution. Go ahead and close those parentheses. And then this is equal to 10. Okay. So now we have a single equation with only a single variable, x, and we could solve for it. Uh, so we may want to distribute the negative 2 inside the parentheses and then combine like terms and proceed from there. So let's see what we get here. We have 2x. Uh, so negative 2 times the negative 3x will give us a positive 6x. The negative 2 times the positive 3 will give us the negative 6, and this is equal to 10. Then we can combine like terms here. The 2x and the 6x combine to get 8x, and we have a negative 6 here equal to 10. And then we may want to add 6 to both sides. Right, get those constant terms together. So we have 8x is equal to 16. Lastly, we have the coefficient 8 here. So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 8. So we get x is equal to 16 divided by 8, or 2. Okay, so that's half of our answer. We need the y value now that's paired with the x value of 2. So to do that, we can, like step 4 says here, we could substitute x back into the first equation to find y. Uh, but 
Really, it, it doesn't matter which equation you plug it back into to find y. Uh, but let's go ahead and use this equation here. So we have 3x plus y is equal to 3. Right? This is our beginning point. We now know that x is 2. So instead of writing x, I'm going to write 2 because I know it's 2 and then plus y, that's what we're looking for now, is equal to 3. So 3 times 2, we get 6, plus y is 3. If we subtract 6 here and subtract it there, we obtain y is equal to negative 3. Okay, so our solution now is going to be the x value of 2, comma, the y value of negative 3. Okay, so again, if the lines are on the Cartesian plane somewhere, if you go ahead and graph this, you'll see that the lines are going to cross at the x value of 2 and the y value of negative 3. And again, this is simultaneously going to solve the first equation. It's going to make that statement true, and it's also going to make this second statement here true as well. Okay, moving on. We're going to take a look at a different method to solve these here. So uh, the substitution method uh, and the elimination method here we're about to cover have their uses depending upon the situation. Now if you have a system of equations um, that does have a solution, uh, you could always rely on the substitution method. I mean, it's not going to fail. However, there's some cases where the elimination method is going to be a lot easier to use. So you do want to know both methods. Okay, so now the elimination method, this one looks a bit longer, but uh, it's not too bad. So we're going to want to take both equations and put them in standard form. This is where you have all of your variables on one side of the equation and then your constant. If you have any constants, uh, they're going to be on the other side of the equation. So in other words, this is going to be ax plus by is equal to c where a, b, and c are all constant numbers. But in this case, a and b are coefficients here of the variables. Uh, step two, uh, don't worry if you need to read this more than one time. It's a lot to take in if this is your first time seeing it. But if necessary, multiply one or both equations by the same number on both sides of the equation. So either the x terms or the y terms are opposites. Okay, so we're going to have some choices here. Step three will be to add the two equations together. So uh, once you add the two equations together, we're going to obtain a new equation. Hopefully, you know, if we did step two right, we should have only a single variable in our new equation. And we're going to want to solve for that variable. And step four is the same as it was in the substitution method. Uh, we take the variable we solved for. We're going to have a definite number at this point, so we go ahead and plug it back into one of the original equations to find the missing second variable. Okay, so now, uh, step three, uh, it may seem like a, a peculiar operation adding these two equations together, but when we get there, I'll show you why this is something that you can do. It may take a little while to see, but it is technically correct that you could add two equations together to obtain a new valid equation. So let's take a look at our first example. We have, oh, well, it's really our third example, uh, 2x plus 3y is 6, and 5x minus 3y is 8. So we want to solve this system. Now, you can solve it using the substitution method. However, it is going to be easier to solve uh, with the elimination method. Oops. Uh, okay, so we have 2x plus 3y is 6, and 5x minus 3y is 8. Okay. So step one, we want to put both of these equations in standard form. 
and they actually already are both in standard form, so this is fine. This is ax plus by is equal to c, and this is also ax plus by, or minus by, it doesn't matter, uh, equal to 8. Okay, so step one is done for us already. Now step two is, if there's a tricky part of this method, then step two will be it. So if necessary, multiply one or both equations by the same number on both sides, so either the x terms or the y terms are opposites. Okay, and what does that mean, opposites? Well, in the case, uh, in this case here, in this system, uh, we have the coefficients of the x terms being 2 and 5. And the coefficients of the y terms are 3, a positive 3, and a negative 3. So the term opposites here is probably exactly what you think opposites are. Like if we have a positive 3, the opposite of that would be considered to be a negative 3. Or if you have a positive 2, the opposite of that would be considered to be a negative 2. Okay, so we have uh, opposites in this case already. We have a positive 3 and a negative 3. So no manipulation of these equations is necessary at this point. Okay, so we don't need to do step 2 here because it's already done. All right. So, and it doesn't matter uh, which variables have opposites, opposite coefficients. Uh, you know, the, if this is a positive 2 and this was a negative 2, and these were different, that would be fine as well. It doesn't matter if you're working with the y's or the x's here. Okay, so once that's done, we go to step 3, which is add these two equations together, and we're we should get an equation with only a single variable. Uh, that's what these opposite coefficients are going to accomplish. They're going to cancel each other out. So how do we add these together? Well, we take the x's, we add those together, and we get 7x. We take the y's, we add these together, so 3y plus a negative 3y. Well, that's 0y. Okay, let me just write it in there. Although if you have 0y, you don't really need it. That's that's gone. You know, let me not write that. So these two, when they're added together, that's gone. Uh, and then we have our equal sign. So then we add everything on the right of the equal sign together. So 6 plus 8 is 14. And then division by 7 on both sides here. We get x is equal to 2. Okay. So, uh the elimination method eliminated the y variables. Okay, that's that's what these opposite coefficients accomplished here. They eliminated one of the variables. So we obtain a new equation with only a single variable and we're able to solve for that. So now this is only half of our answer. We also need to get y. Uh, so step four is substitute this value of x or y whatever you just found, back into one of the original equations to find the other variable. So let's just use this first equation. We know that 2x plus 3y is equal to 6. And now we know that the x value is equal to 2. Okay, Wherever the lines meet, we know that the x value is going to be 2. Okay. Oops. Uh, all right, now, so 2 times 2 plus 3 times y is equal to 6. 2 times 2 is 4. And then we have a 3y and a 6. So to solve this, we're going to move our constant numbers to this side. And we get 3y is equal to 2. Now, division by 3 on both sides we get y is equal to 2 thirds. Okay, so the solution of this system of equations has an x value of 2 and a y value of 2 thirds. We can check this uh, if you plug this value into the first equation we should get a true statement uh, which we would get 4 plus 2 is 6 by plugging in the 2 and the 2 thirds 
as well as for the second equation here. If you plug in 2 and 2 thirds here, we get 10 minus, now the 3 times 2 thirds would be 2, so 10 minus 2 is 8. So this solves both equations, so we know it's going to be the solution to the system. Now, step 3, adding these two equations together, I mean, you should know that this is a valid mathematical thing to do. Okay, so uh, think about what we're doing here. We have 2x plus 3y is equal to 6, and we have 5x minus 3y is equal to 8. And we're adding these equations together to obtain a new equation. Now, why is it that we can do this? Well, you want to think about what these represent here. Now, 2x plus 3y is simply an expression of a number. In fact, we know what that number is. We know that it's 6. And what we're doing when we add this to this side here, we have 5x minus 3y. And when we add this first equation, when we add 2x plus 3y to this equation here, essentially what we're doing is we're adding in a 6. And originally we had an 8 over here, and what we did to the 8 was we added a 6. Okay, so adding these two equations is essentially like you're adding 6 to both sides of the equation, which, as you know, is, is a fine thing to do. If you manipulate one side of the equation, you would do the same manipulation on the other side of the equation as well. So... Uh, step three, adding these two equations, it's a perfectly fine thing to do, and um, yeah, you, you may may have to think about it just a little bit uh, to understand that this is fine, but it certainly is. So moving on now, we're going to have the last example here. We have 4x, oops, we have 4x plus 3y is equal to 29 and we have 3x minus 2y is equal to negative 8. Okay, first of all, if we want to use the elimination method, I mean you could use the substitution method as well, uh, you could use graphical methods as well to solve these systems, but if we know that we want to use the elimination method, we want to take both of these equations and put them in standard form. And these are both already in standard form. Uh, AX plus BY is C and AX plus BY is C. So now step two, if necessary, multiply one or both equations by the same number on both sides to obtain those opposites. Now in this case, it says uh, multiply one or both equations. In this case, I mean, you could manipulate one equation using fractions, but if you want to avoid working with fractions here, we're going to have to uh, manipulate both of these equations somehow. So let me show you an example. If we decide we wanted to eliminate the y variable, we would want this coefficient to be the opposite of this coefficient here. So how can we do this? Well. 3 and 2, they both go into 6, right? What would you need to multiply 3 by to obtain a 6 here? Well, we need to multiply it by 2. So, if we want this to be a 6, we would have to multiply the first equation by 2. Right? So, 2 times all of that. And now, if we want to obtain a equivalent statement, we need to make sure that we multiply both sides by 2. Okay, so in this way, we're not changing uh, the equation in any way. Okay, we're just changing the form in which we see the equation. It's still the same equation. So what we have here now is 8x plus 6y, that's what we get from distributing, equal to 58. So 2 times 29. Okay, great. So we have a 6y here. Now we're going to work with this second equation. If we want a 6 to be here, well, 
really what we would want is a negative 6, right? We want the opposite of this value here. So we want a negative 6. So to get that, we would multiply this equation by 3. Okay, and we do that on both sides of the equation. Okay, and when we do that, let me just do an arrow here. When we distribute the 3, we get 9x minus 6y is equal to negative 24. Okay, and let me rewrite this down here. So 9x minus 6y is equal to negative 24. So you see, uh, we can man manipulate equations like this uh, to see whatever we need to see in order to do this elimination method here. Now, if you wanted to work with fractions, um, you could have just multiplied this, uh, this first equation by positive 2 thirds. And by doing that, we would obtain a, a positive 2 here. Okay. But our other numbers may be a little bit messier. So if you want to avoid the fractions, you could do it like this too. And what I found, this value of 6 was the least common multiple. You don't need to find the least common multiple either. Uh, but something that, that both of the numbers would go into, like 12, for instance, would be fine. If you multiply this by 4 and this by a positive 6, we would have a positive 12 and a negative 12, and then you'd proceed from there. So now that we have these opposites, right? we have a positive 6 and a negative 6 for the y, uh, for the y variable, we can move on to step 3. We add these equations together to obtain a new equation. Okay, so let me add these. So the 8 and the 9x will give me 17x, the positive 6x and the negative 6, I mean the positive 6y and the negative 6y cancel. And on the right side of the equal, 58 plus a negative 24 would be 34. Okay, and then division by 17 on both sides gives us x is equal to 2. Okay, and that's half of our answer. The other half will come from step 4 by substituting this value back into one of the original equations. So one of the equations was 4x plus 3y is equal to 29. We now know that x is equal to 2, so instead of just writing the x like that, we want to fill in 2. Okay, and then we proceed to solve it for y. So plus 3y is equal to 29. So 4 times the 2, we get 8. Now to solve this here, we want to move all our constant numbers to one side, so we're going to move this 8 here. So now we have 3y is equal to 21. And I'm running out of space, but division by 3 on both sides gives us y is equal to 7. Okay, so we now know the solution to the system would be 2, comma 7. Okay. Now, in these four cases here, these four examples, we didn't run into any of the special cases where uh, we have no solution or an infinite number of solutions. I mean, those are mostly exceptions, and you just want to be aware of them, okay? Uh, so, you know, if we had a system of equations and these equations had the same slope, you're not going to be able to do these uh, two methods here. You're going to run into some uh, inconsistency where you can't solve for any of the variables. Okay, in that case, you would just say you have no solution. Alright, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.